On today's episode, it's Topaz Adjust 5. Join me as I take a blast from the past. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, we're looking at an oldie but a goodie by Topaz Software. This is called Topaz Adjust 5. If you want to add a lot of extra pop, punch and detail to your images. This is a great piece of software to help you do that. And by the way, Topaz Adjust 5 is the predecessor to Topaz Adjust AI. Topaz have stepped it up by using artificial intelligence to help you get the job done quicker. Topaz Adjust 5 is no longer available, but this piece of software that you see in the screen right now, Topaz Adjust AI, the artificial intelligent version of it, is still available. I'll link it in the description below this video. You can save an additional 15% off by using my promo code David. Kelly. Well, now back to the matter at hand. I went ahead and duplicated my background layer in Photoshop and called it Topaz Adjust 5 so I can work non-destructively. Now, let me go ahead and launch Adjust 5 and we'll get started. Just come up to Filter and you'll find it living in your Topaz Labs category. And here it is right here, Adjust 5. Let's launch it. Now, here we are in Topaz Adjust 5. It's a great looking interface. The left-hand side of the screen is your collections and presets. And uh, you can pick a collection and then click this button right here and you're going to see a bunch of presets. So if you don't know which direction to take your image, this will really help you out. I don't generally go this way with it. I'll just start from scratch myself. So I'm going to click this arrow and get out of here. Presets and collections are a great way of getting started. Now, over on the right-hand side of the interface are all your adjustments. Now, I got to say this about Topaz Adjust AI. It has a really great interface as well, and it has a lot of really nice presets too. By the way, if you already own Topaz Adjust 5 and you've taken it off your computer, I'll give you some information in the description below this video where you can re-download it and recover your license key as well. It'll probably still work on most computers today. Now, if you own Adjust 5 and it still works on your computer, do you need Topaz Adjust AI? Well, that's totally up to you. I have it and I really enjoy it. It's a little different than Adjust 5. I get different type results. So they're both kind of cool to have, to be honest with you. But no, you don't necessarily have to because Adjust 5 will give you really great results. Before I start making a bunch of adjustments, let's get rid of the presets and collections because I won't be using those. So if we click this arrow, they go away and that just gives us a little more real estate. Now for me, the power of Topaz Adjust AI is the adaptive exposure as well as under this color section, adaptive saturation. This is where we can really pull out a lot of dynamic range in your image kind of like HDR. Now you can go over the top like as an HDR and get a really ugly image, or you can be very sparing in the adjustment and pull out some really beautiful dynamic range. You can also achieve those same results using Adjust AI with their artificial intelligence. It takes a little more effort and work here in Adjust 5, but I enjoy that experience. I feel like I'm in control of what's happening. It's hard to explain adaptive exposure and regions, but think of it this way. Right Right now, you see it says four for regions. Think of dividing this image into four different regions and then adjust five analyzes each one of those regions independently. Now you can take this region the whole way up to 50. And when you take it up to 50, this is where you can really take on that really HDR look because it's putting 50 different blocks or regions on your image. And it's examining each one of those independently, which gives you a lot more precision in your exposure adjustment. It looks at each block or region independently and makes its adjustment based upon each separate region. It's really hard to explain, but I hope that makes some sense to you. Now let's go ahead and make an adjustment. Right now the exposure is at zero. So let me take this 50 and let's drag it back to about 25. I usually like to start around there. Now you gotta be careful because you can get halos around these mountains here if you go too crazy and I'll show you. Let's take the adaptive exposure, but watch what happens when I start to drag this up. Notice the increased dynamic range because it's basing its exposure adjustment on those 25 individual regions, okay? And there's a slight amount of haloing and if I take it the whole way up to the right, 
you can really see that haloing, right? So you got to be careful. But this is taking on that HDR type look, which is very garish and I don't like it. So what I'd probably do is let me take my regions back to around 20. I think that's a really good sweet spot to start at. And now let's take this adaptive exposure back. Okay. I'm going to keep that's 34. Let's take it the whole way off so we can see the original image. Now let's start to drag it up here. I'm going to take it up into like 48 here. Now, if you left click on your uh, canvas, you can see there's your before and there's your after. But look at that increased dynamic range. Pretty cool stuff, right? And I like that. And I think that's pretty good. And now we have uh, contrast. And again, you can play with these regions if you want to. If you move this more to the right, you can see how the image changes. And I'm bringing out even, it's giving me a more defined precision type adjustment. And actually, I kind of like it there. I may want to pull back the adaptive exposure a little bit so I don't get any halos. But here's the before and here's the after. And I like that. I think that looks really good. Look at all that beautiful detail it's brought out. Now, I've lost a little bit of contrast, so let's add a little bit of contrast back. And that's why we have this contrast control here. And we also have a brightness control. So if it's too bright, I can pull this back a little bit. And I might just do that, just a little tiny bit, like maybe a minus 7. I think that looks good. And then we can protect our highlights. If our highlights start to clip, we can move this to the right or if we're clipping our shadows, we can pull this to the right and we will unclip those shadows. But if you double click any one of these uh, slider names, it'll put it back to the default setting. Okay, and next is details. Now you're gonna find all this stuff in Topaz Adjust AI as well. And they're probably a little bit better in Topaz Adjust AI because Topaz have really gotten better with this kind of stuff. But the detail in here is pretty good. I like to put this on process details independently. And I can't remember the real reason, but I've always felt I got better results. So take my word on that one. So let me take the strength now and start to pull this up. But you see, see those details start to pop out here. Now, if I shut off this process details independently, watch, it'll look really over detailed. So I'm going to turn that back on. But look at that detail. Here is the before and here is the after. Okay. We've lost some of the saturation, but we're going to bring some of that back. Then you also have a detail boost and a threshold adjustment radius. I'm not going to get into that right now. And you also have some sharpening here, but I think that looks good. I'm going to go right into color. And again, the, the same principle here with the regions. I think you can go up to, yeah, up to 50 different regions here. So I'm going to go around 18. That's my gut on this one. And let's start to pull up the adaptive saturation. But notice how it starts pulling out all kind of beautiful colors and things. Now, if I go too far, let's take it to the extreme. You can see it's pulling out all kind of color in here. Now, if I was doing something like a painting, I may want to do this you know, add all this extra color and then take it into like, say, Topaz Impression. But for a photograph, that's way too much. But let's take it the whole way off and let's start to slowly build it up. And maybe somewhere right around in there. See, this snow right here has got a little bit of a blue cast to it, which I don't mind it. If I go too far, it's going to get really blue there. You see that? So I'm going to come back just till there's just a hint of blue there. And I like that. And then we have an overall saturation here that we can work with. And of course, we can still work with these regions. Let's pull this up. Yeah, and I might do that a little bit. Pull that region up a little bit right around there. And let's take the overall saturation and just give it a boost. Not too much, but just a little wee bit. Let's uh, shut the color off. Here's before the color. And here is the after. Now, I may be a little too strong there, so I'm going to pull back on this saturation a little bit. Maybe somewhere around in there. And I may pull these regions back a little bit. Yeah. Because I don't want to lose some of this gray in the mountain right here. I think that looks really nice. So let's shut the color off. Here's the before and here's the after. But you see what I mean? There's a little bit of work in here. But it's fun to experiment and adjust. And of course, we have a saturation boost. We can boost the saturation. I don't need it, I don't believe. And then we have a hue adjustment that we can alter the entire hue of the image. But I like it right there. And then we also have some local adjustments like you're going to find dodging and burning and things like that in here. 
But I always save that kind of stuff for Photoshop. And then we have finishing touches. We have a lot of cool stuff in here. We can add diffusion. We can add grain, transparency. Think of transparency as the overall opacity. Right now we have full opacity, like 100% opacity. If I drag it to the right, we're bringing back some of the original image. So I take it the whole way over to one. All you see is the original image. So you can just add a little bit of that or all of it. Usually what I do is leave it all here and then I'll pull the opacity back in Photoshop if I felt I went too strong. But then you can add some warmth and coolness. If you take the warm slider to the right, you'll add warmth into the image, which I like that right there, 0.11, or you can cool it down by moving it to the left, okay? But I think I want to warm it up a little bit and I think like 0 0.10, 0 0.11, I think that looks good. You can even add a border if you want, a vignette, so some cool stuff here. And you also have quad tone in here. So you can literally add uh, four different tones here. Kind of like Topaz Restyle, right? Pretty, pretty nice stuff. But I think I like it. Here is my before and here is my after. Now, when you're happy with it, you just click OK. That'll take you back to Photoshop. Or you can click Apply and then start readjusting it if you want to. But for now, I think I'm done. And I think you get the idea of how cool this piece of software is. Let's click OK, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now, let's check this out. Here is the before. What a change, wouldn't you say? That's the before, and here is the after. Beautiful. Can you see why I like this piece of software so much? Now, if I felt I'm too strong here, I can take my opacity and start to pull it back. You know, like I may take it back to like a, like a 78, 79, let's say 79. Here's a before and here is the after. Look at that dynamic range. Well, there it is. That was Topaz Adjust 5, an oldie but a goodie. If you still own it, pull it out and see if it still works on your computer. And if it does, I think you'll be a happy camper. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.